In landscape photography, we're often faced with very high contrast scenes, perhaps where the sky is very bright, the foreground is very dark, and our camera's sensor just can't capture that high dynamic range in one frame. And even when it can, sometimes boosting up those shadows results in very noisy images, and trying to bring down and recover those highlights results in colors being washed out, and you're left thinking, well, what do I do? Well, in a situation like that, it's an ideal opportunity to use luminosity masks to create an exposure blended image and in this video I'm going to show you how to do that. Before you even get inside Luminar Neo the first part of the process begins on location. You want to make sure that you're shooting a bracketed set of images. That's having your camera locked off on a sturdy tripod and you're going to shoot a series of differently exposed images of the same scene. And the only thing that should be changing to create your different exposures should be your shutter speed, not your ISO and not your aperture, just your shutter speed. I usually shoot a base exposure and then my exposure will either come down minus one stop or plus one stop so that we have an exposure for the highlights and an exposure for the shadows as well. To be honest, if I've gone to the trouble of getting myself in a really nice location, I will usually play it safe and shoot a bracketed set of five images just to make sure I've covered my bases. So now we've got the images to work with, let's load Luminar Neo and get into the edit. Personally, I quite like photographing waterfalls, this sort of thing, but one of the problems we often have is that the highlights in the water get overexposed and often we lose all of the detail in these dark shadows around here. So this kind of shot is an ideal candidate for exposure blending. So I'm gonna keep this very simple just for demonstration purposes so you guys can learn exactly what's going on. We're gonna use two images only. We're gonna have one image that represents the detail in the background and the shadows and then we're gonna use another image that's going to represent the details in the highlights. So we're gonna work with this image first, and this is gonna be our base, and then we're gonna bring in the highlights over the top. So the first thing I wanna do is just do a very quick rough edit on this, and as I bring down the exposure on this one, I'm gonna bring it all the way so that you can see what I'm talking about. No matter how far I bring the exposure down, even though I'm using a camera with an excellent sensor and a very good dynamic range, we still cannot recover the brightest parts of this image. So that's why we're gonna be introducing another layer that's gonna hold the information for those highlights. So like I said, I don't need to go too crazy with this one. The main part of our editing occurs once we've restored a full dynamic range to this photo. So to recover those highlights, I'm gonna to come to the Layers Palette over here, click the plus icon, and I've already loaded that image into my Layers Palette. I click it once, and now we can see it layered over the top with 50% opacity. So let me push it all the way to 100 so we can clearly see what that photo looks like. It's pretty much underexposed, but at least I know that it has all of that lovely information for the water. So I'm just, again, gonna do a quick develop raw on this to make sure that I'm happy with the brightness values in this because as you can see it is too dark at the moment so let's just bump the shadows up a little bit and that's going to help with the blending between the two photos and the other thing I want to do is just shift the white point over so that we actually have a pure white point and the way to tell that we're hitting pure white is just to press the J key on your keyboard as a warning and then we just want to move that curve over until we just start to see those little red dots. And now we know that we have a pure white value just here and we're not going overexposed. So now I'm happy with the water and we have our midtones and shadows boosted. That's gonna help with the blending between these two layers. Now we can come in and work with a mask so that we're revealing only the water effect. So we wanna to come to layer properties where we're gonna access our masking. Now to start with, I'm just gonna clear the mask so that we see the underlying layer only. So now we can come into the layer properties so that we can access the masking options. First of all, I'm just going to clear the mask so that we only see the underlying layer, the bottom layer that we originally worked on. And now we're gonna be able to see how we reveal the darker layer, which has all that information for the water on top. I'm gonna jump into the masking options. Now in the past, what you might have done is perhaps grab the brush and just try to start painting that effect in. And that is one option that you could do, but it's really not very precise. So what other options did you have? Well, we have Mask AI and we know that there's a water selection tool within that. So if I click the water selection, you can see that it's picked out all the water. However, 
you can see the problem here. The mask is very abrupt, it's not very accurate, and it's leaving some really nasty haloing going on. So if I show that mask, you can see it's yeah, it knows where the water is, but it's just not doing a very good job. We've also got the option for object selection, which might allow us to start selecting the rocks or subtract the rocks from the mask, but none of those options are particularly good when we compare them to luminosity masking. So what this enables us to do, as I've shown in other videos, is basically make a selection based on the brightness values in our photo. So as I move this slider over, you can see that it's only the brightest pixels that are being selected based on what's included in this rectangular frame here. And we can move the edges of that, we can move it up and down so that we can refine our mask really precisely. So we want to actually make sure that we're masking the highlights so we can move it over to the right, select the highlights we want, and then the arrow that's underneath, we pull that out and that's gonna create the soft transition that we're after. The further you break this line out with the arrow, the softer the transition is gonna be. And once you think you're happy with your selection, just come to the luminosity option there to jump out of that. And we'll just close those layer properties down. And now we can see our effect. So here's our before with our overexposed water, not a hope of seeing any detail in there. And this is what we've been able to create with the luminosity masking. As you can see from the distribution in the histogram here, we basically have a full tonal range in our image now, which is perfect for starting any edit. If you want to fine tune these layers, you absolutely can. We can still go in and make changes to them. So for example, if we wanted to enhance the water, the highlights that we added, we could add some accent AI. We could also add some structure if we wanted just to bring out a bit more detail in those water fronds. And now we've got a really nice exposure blend thanks to those luminosity masks. Now, of course, we could do this with HDR Merge, but the big difference is HDR Merge, which does do a fantastic job, it's all automated. This is giving us back the control over our photo. So if you wanna really fine tune and finesse things and get what you consider to be a better result than HDR, then this is the method that you can use. Now in this example, I've shown you how we can use the luminosity masking technique to recover our highlights, but we can also work the other way around and use the same technique, but this time to recover the shadows. Doesn't really matter which way around we do it. Let me show you that option. Okay, let's come out of the photo we were just working on. And as I scroll up, you can see that all of these photos are ideal candidates for bringing back detail in what are high contrast scenes. So for example, for this one, I used different exposures, combined them to create this exposure blended version, perfect for starting an edit. Now in this photo, I'm just gonna show you how we can work the other way around to bring back all the information in the shadows here. So let's jump into the edit section and again, do a very, very quick edit on this. Let's just bump up the contrast a little bit. I'm gonna bring down the highlights to make sure the sky and the background over there looks good. And I'm not worried at all that I'm losing detail in the foreground because that's what we're actually gonna bring back with our luminosity mask. So again, I'm gonna come over to the layers section here and I'm going to click and load the brighter exposure over the top. I'll push the opacity all the way to 100 so that you can see exactly what this exposure looks like. Now, before I try and blend it in, what I'd like to do is try and get the brighter pixels closer to what I'm blending it to underneath. That's part of the key for a good exposure blend is to try and get the midtones to match as closely as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's definitely gonna help with the blending. So let's hide this layer so that we can see what's underneath and now show it again. And so it's pretty much the foreground that we're wanting to introduce into the layer underneath. So we'll use the sky, the cliffs and the hills in the background from this layer with the foreground from this one. So again, let's come into the masking options, come into luminosity masking. And after a brief calculation, we then have these sliders. So again, we can move this around to make our selection depending on the brightness values of the pixels. So let me show you how we can do this incorrectly. So you can currently see that I've not broken this um, arrow out here. If you do break it out and you wanna put it back, all you need to do is double click on it. But just for the sake of showing you how to do this incorrectly, I'm just gonna leave it without that being pulled out and let's have a look at what it does. Okay, it's brought back the shadow detail, but it's really pixelated. Let's zoom in. 
you can see that that does not look good at all. And so it's really important to make sure we get a smooth transition. So I'm just gonna clear that mask and go again. Luminosity masking, grab the highlight slider and bring that down until we're only selecting the shadows that we want. And now we're gonna break that handle out and I'm gonna bring it out quite far. The further I take it, as I said, the smoother the transition, which is really nice, but I don't want it affecting the clouds. I wanna leave those untouched. So we'll go for something like that. Let's have a little look. So we'll close the layer properties and there you go. You can see that we've brought back all of that shadow information. So I'll toggle the before and after, before and after. Hopefully this is making sense so far because what I've got to share with you now is gonna allow you to really perfect your results, but it is just a little bit more complex. So stay with me. Initially, we've been using the sliders within the luminosity masking option to fine tune our mask, but that can create some unwanted flattening of contrast in some areas in our image. It's then up to us to identify where these areas are and use the paintbrush in a raise mode to just take away those transitional zones. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Because at first glance, this looks like a pretty solid exposure blend. But if I hide the brightening layer that's gonna talk into those shadows, and then I show it again, while it's doing what we're after in the foreground, if we focus on the midground through here, and again, I hide this layer, which is boosting up the shadows, we get a lot more contrast in our original image than we do once we've brought this layer over the top. And so what we want to do is remove this brightening layer in the areas where it's destroying our contrast. But we want to do that in a way that is still leaving the beautifully subtle luminosity mask that we created before. It's a little bit of a dance to get this right and it is gonna take a little bit of practice on your part just to get the results that you're after but I'm gonna go with a raise set to 45 and I'm just gonna paint across the middle. Okay, let's go again. I'm just gonna go through that middle zone again. And now I've brought back that contrast through the middle part. So as I hide and show this layer, now you can see it is just affecting this very dark foreground, not the background. And if you were thinking, oh, why didn't you just use a gradient mask from the bottom and just taper that off towards the middle, you're not gonna get that level of precision that we're seeing around all of these leaves here. So if we look at the mask that's actually taking care of that, by showing it, you can see that it precisely matches all of those leaves. You just are not gonna get that by using any other masking technique. And again, once we've got our layers in place, we can come in and fine tune things. If we wanna just darken down the foreground just a tad, we can do that. If we wanna add more contrast in there, we can absolutely do that as well. So here's our before, here's our after, that's quite nice. And our very original before and after, before and after. Using luminosity masks like this to create an exposure blended landscape to work with gives us a much cleaner file to start our edit with. Your shadows are gonna be richer in detail. The highlights are gonna be much truer with better detail, better color. You're gonna get a much better result from your finished edit. Now, before you do start editing, because these exist as separate layers, you have to edit those layers individually, which is a real pain. So what I suggest you do is export this as a 16-bit TIFF, and it's that that you're gonna do your finished edit on. Just in case you're not sure what I mean, let me show you quickly. Right click, come to export, make sure you have format set as TIFF, make sure you're set to the actual size so you're not losing any detail. The color space I would recommend would be Adobe RGB. It gives you more color information than sRGB. And Profoto RGB, which is the biggest color space, which is great. Unfortunately, most monitors won't actually display all those colors. So Adobe RGB is a good compromise. You don't want any compression and you wanna keep the bit depth set at 16 rather than eight. And then you're good to go. Just click export. And now when you open that photo again, to start editing it, it is no longer separate layers. So any changes you make, so for example, enhance AI, it's gonna affect the photo globally, i.e. everything's getting edited all at once, not the separate layers. So here's our before, here's our after. 
And don't forget, luminosity masks were a new edition in version 1.19 and beyond. So if you're using a previous version of Luminar Neo, make sure you update to this current version to access all of this. If you don't have Luminar Neo yet, why are you watching the video? Um, I have a discount link in the description below that you're welcome to. It's a really great deal because you get to save a bit of money and I get a small commission from that as well, which helps me keep creating this free content for you. So that's a win-win. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to learn more about Luminar Neo and uh, hit the like button because that helps me out with it as well. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.